so Lena, the first season of uh, Master of None, I almost said Mr. Robot. Um, <laughs> let me start again. Um, Good show. Yes, indeed, yeah. Um, so Lena, the first season of Master of None uh, really took a lot of people by surprise and uh, got great critical acclaim, won an Emmy. What was it like going into the second season for you and, and Aziz and, and everybody else involved? I mean, I think it was exciting. I think we, you know, but also it was a little scary because it's sort of like um, I compare it to having to drop a sophomore album after everybody really likes your debut. Um, so you're excited to get back in the studio, but you're also nervous because you don't want to mess up. So I think it was a combination of excitement and a little bit of nerves. <clears throat> How do you account for the instantaneous success of this show, not just with critics, but with viewers as well? Um, I think we kind of hit an interesting window. You know, it's like we're not in our 20s. Um, we're not married with kids and houses yet. So it's like that weird early part of your 30s where people assume you should have everything figured out and we don't, but we're not like complete, like, like, like silly people either. So I think people can relate to it because they're like, yeah, I'm in my early 30s. I'm still, I'm not in a serious relationship or I haven't figured out what I really want to do. or I'm not happy doing that thing that I set out to do. Um, I don't own a house. I don't have a pet, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's like because you haven't reached certain milestones, you kind of you still feel like you're not grown up yet. So it's that beautiful window of like not in your twenties anymore, but you don't you're not married with kids. And I think there's a lot of people that speaks to and um, and people that are in their twenties sort of look up to it. People that are in their forties kind of look back at it and go, I remember those days. And people who are in the space that we're in right now can really look at it and go, Yeah, that's my life. That's what it looks like. So I think that's why people kind of take to it. So let, let's talk a little bit about the second season and uh, your character, Denise. What were some of the ways that she grew in, and changed this season? I mean, a cool thing was we got to meet her family. We got to see her in a relationship. And, and I think, you know, we got a real origin story for Denise and Deb, which I think is really cool. So I think we just sort of got a little bit more history with her. Um, you know, she still bounced around the city with the guys. But I think getting to like go back into her past and to see how her and Deb became friends, I think was a really cool twist this season. I want to talk about that episode because you also wrote it, uh, the Thanksgiving one. Tell us a little bit about where the idea for that episode came from. Well, it's interesting. It kind of was sort of, it grew organically. I came to New York to sit with the writer's room and, uh, and I was just talking to them about my life and my girlfriend and little things I had experienced. And in doing that, they asked, me like well how did you come out like what was that like and uh and i started talking about that and i started you know talking about my mom talking about my aunt and uh and they just seemed to be very intrigued by that and then um and then so when i got back to my hotel they said we want to do an episode about that that's what we want to do so um so yeah so it was like really cool and i just think that uh they really took to that idea i really embraced it and then the whole idea about you know about doing it in terms of Thanksgiving and a bunch of different Thanksgivings, that was really, came out of the writer's room. And so it was sort of a marriage, you know, it was like my story, the writers framing it in a way that it made sense for an episode. And so that would be standalone. And then Aziz and I wrote it together in London. So it was sort of like a nice sort of like snowball. I should say that uh, you have written for a number of shows and, and mm -hmm. uh, some films too, I believe. Uh, so, I mean, it's, this is not your first uh, script. Uh, I wonder what, um, in terms of writing this, because um, the show has such a kind of free form, I guess is, is the word I'm looking for. I mean, you, it can be about so many different things and, and anything as well. I mean, can you talk a bit about the freedom if, if you felt any in, during the writing of this? Oh yeah, I mean, I didn't get in, there was no notes call or anything like that after you know we finished the script. Uh, there wasn't anyone on set saying, oh, can you try this? Or can, can you explain that? Or what does that mean? We had complete, you know, carte blanche. And I think that's just because we were in our second season. It's because we do have Aziz, you know, at the head of the show. And, and I think Netflix really trusts him and Alan to, to, to put on a good show. So that was phenomenal. That's, it's also this almost like a fairy tale world. It's just not like that on other stuff. It's like, you know, people, they're like, can you explain that joke? What does that mean? Do this, spell that out. It's like, it's just, and, and for them, they were like, no, like this, 
this is your story. People will get it. If they don't, they'll ask somebody. Um, uh, but yeah, there was no note session or anything like that. I just got a chance to write it. And Aziz and I liked it. And so we, we shot it. And uh, in terms of drawing upon your own personal experiences, I mean, how much of it was your own life and how much of it was uh, fictionalized? I mean, well, it's like we really drew from my actual coming out experience. Like that scene is completely verbatim. But I never brought home a girl in the vein of nipples and toes like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, and I did not grow up with the, with an Indian kid. You know, coming to Thanksgiving every year. So things like that, we obviously took critical, we could we took on creative license, but everything else, we I really drew from my own experiences. Was it difficult to do that? Um, no, I think it was kind of fun. To me, I, I always tend to uh, write autobiographically, you know, I think, um, or, or put myself into other characters. And uh, that to me is, that's always when you get the best result, when you're pulling from things that you know, pulling from real experiences. I think that's when people really can connect to the material. So it wasn't difficult. It's always fun to kind of go back and relive those things and, and then to infuse it with humor. Right. And uh, I mean, you kind of brought this up before, but I just wanted to get the the setting at during multiple thanksgivings why mm -hmm. was that the right structure for this episode um, that came out of the writer's room you know and i think it, i thought it was really smart you know um i think anise is the one that pitched that in the room and so i think it what it does did was it gave us a history it gave us a chance to tell the story over the course of time and i just thought it made sense you know i can't take credit for that one that was the room and then sort of like bouncing ideas around right um, Angela Bassett as your mother, can you talk a little bit about uh, working with her and uh, what that experience was like? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, she to me is an icon. You know, I mean, I've watched her since I was a young person and I think, you know, in the world of Hollywood or great actresses, she's up there, you know, for, I don't think just for, my, for, for black people, but I think for audiences in general, I mean, she's played wonderful characters, whether it be a Malcolm X, um, and, and what's the got to do with it and waiting to exhale. She's been a, she, she's been a part of our lives forever. And I think she's someone that represents the best of ourselves and who we want to be, particularly as black women. So her getting to work with her and she's so down to earth. She's such a hard worker. She's such a warm, kind, generous spirit that it was just, you know, I think myself and Aziz and, Melina and Anise and Alan, we, we all sort of were, became fans when she when she was around. But she just kind of would always sort of diffuse that and just sort of come in and do the work. And she was just a lot of fun. She has such a great, great spirit. Well, in, in regards to, uh, you know, moments from your own life, I mean, was there ever a moment when you were on set with her and, and maybe she looked to you to say, am, am I getting this right? Or, or you might have said, this isn't quite, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, she... Didn't necessarily do that. I mean, I think for her, she had to find the character because it was not like, oh, this is exactly like my mom. You know, it was a character that we created. So she definitely, we, we wanted her to feel comfortable to create that character and to feel comfortable in that character. Um, but no, she's not that person. She's not, is this right? Is that? Da, 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 da. She's just really making sure she's giving the scene what it needs. She's giving the actors what they need. And, and I think that, and that's where we found the honesty in it. You know, when I really put all my truth on the page. So for her, it was always about, going to the script and making sure we were getting our point across in terms of the scene. Well, you've got such a tight knit group on the show, I, I assume, I mean, you know, with uh, Aziz and, and Eric and, and the same kind of group of writers and, and directors kind of throughout. So, I mean, what, what do you guys give each other uh, in each episode that, that really helps? Um, I think a big thing we we riff a lot, you know, um, I think a lot of people have this sort of misconception that it's a lot, that the show is predominantly ad lib. It's not, it's all scripted. Uh, what we do, though, is when we're filming, sometimes Alan and Aziz will say, oh, can we can we beat that joke? Let's pitch on it. Um, does this feel honest? Is this how you would really react in this moment? And then and that we kind of huddle and talk about it. Um, sometimes they'll ask us, like, hey, if you have an idea, throw it out. Um, Eric is great. He, he often directs a lot of episodes. Obviously, Alan directed this season, so did Aziz. So it really is seamless, you know, they're, whether they're behind the camera whether Aziz and Eric are in front of it, we're always trying to figure out ways. And Kelvin Yu, who's a phenomenal writer who plays Brian, he's, you know, again, he's always coming up with jokes and pitches and, and, and not trying to be the same and, or just try to add a certain kind of flavor to a line that sort of, that you don't expect to be funny. Uh, so we're always just sort of like trying to make sure we're pushing each other to be honest, pushing each other to make sure it feels 
you know, funny and entertaining, but we don't ever want to go off the rails. And so we're also pushing each other to be grounded as well. It certainly comes across on screen, uh, you know, in those scenes where you guys are together and, and hanging out. I mean, it really does feel very natural. Um, I, I wanted to talk a bit more about, I guess, your relationship with Aziz, both on camera and off camera, you know, in particular in that Thanksgiving episode, because we get so much insight into your friendship. Um, I mean, well, I think Aziz and I just had, a, early on, had a very natural chemistry. Um, you know, we have a very similar energy in terms of joking around, but sort of being laid back. You know, I think people assume, oh, because he's a comedian, he's always on, or he's always telling jokes. And that's not the case, you know? And I think people assume, oh, well, you, you know, you're always, you know, you're a writer, so you're always talking. It's like, no, like, we're genuinely, we're thinkers. You know, sometimes we can be very quiet, we can be very introverted at times. So. I think, but but sometimes we can be on or we can be silly. And so I think Aziz and I definitely share that in common. But also, you know, too, it's like, I think he and I have a similar, you know, goal, which is to tell very honest, human, interesting, funny stories and to do it in a way that people, that other artists respect and, and, and people can connect to. So I think that's why on and off screen, we really vibe. And I think that's one reason why we vibed really quickly. You know, I think because we're both writers, we're both like, you know, overachievers were both like people that really want to try to get our message across in a way that we you know that we hope to and, and with an aesthetic that's unique and different and stands out it, it certainly is a unique aesthetic i mean it's very cinematic and i mean it's like you guys shoot little short films with each other yeah, so. uh -huh. yeah. and that's what i admire about it you know even when i go because i watch the season you know it's like everybody else I, I'm, I'm obviously around or i'll read scripts and i'll see things but I like to watch things once they're complete. And I found myself being really blown away by a certain shot or taken aback by how long they'll hold a scene. Like, I'm, I'm a fan of the show as well, you know, and I'm really I'm just so, you know, taken aback by how ambitious they were, especially this season, how many big swings they take. And, you know, they're not afraid to push the, you know, push the envelope. And, um, yeah, that's why I think I'm so, that's one reason I'm so proud to be a part of it. And I mean, uh, emotionally ambitious as well. I mean, we, we talk about this episode. There's a lot of honesty and, and empathy that's given uh, in all of the episodes. You know, it's not it's not just a, a pure comedy. Right. No. I mean, I, and I think and I think it's easy to get to write and Alan as well in that some of the most you know deepest or quietest moments there's there's humor in it, and I think they always can find can find that, and I think that's why the show was so cool because. The fact that they did an episode about religion, they did an episode about my character coming out to her parents, you know, they did an episode, you know, about being the children of immigrants. I mean, I think they deal with these big subjects and then ground them in some way that people can look at it and either see themselves or relate to it in a, in a real way. And I think that's what makes the show so different and makes it special. And they also push the boundaries of what a half hour single camera comedy can do because they're on Netflix. And that's why I think it's such a great marriage. I don't think this show could live anywhere else. Right, absolutely. Um, as a fan of the show, I'm, I'm curious about you know, season three. It hasn't been announced yet. So can you give us any insight on that? I wish I could. That's, that's a disease I'm sorry question, man. I mean, it, I think for him, you know, I mean, look, in, in, at the end of the day, he's a comic. And so I think like some of my favorite comics actually take their time in between specials. And I think that's what I look at it as. Like, he's really taking this time because he has to, him and Alan as well, you know, I, they have to live life. They have to have experiences. They have to share text messages and emails and, and, and sort of say, okay, do we have enough to do a season that'll be worthy of people's time? And I think that's really where they're coming from. They don't want to make something unless it's great. And that's what I respect about them. Um, and, I, and I think they, and I think it's a, it's, it's a testament to their craft. I think it's a testament to, who they are as people, as artists. And I think they don't want to waste our time either. You know, they don't want to bring us back if they're just going to do a repeat of what we've done, what we've done before. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like working with them so much is because they really do, they're only going to invite you to the party if it's going to be the best party you've ever been to. And I think that's what's so cool. So we'll see, you know, if they, if they come up with some stuff, if they got some ideas, you know, we're all ready to come back and play. But I think for them, it's like they want to make it worth our while. Well, I'm certainly ready to see more episodes, uh, so I hope it's uh, as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> Lena, thank you so much, and uh, congratulations on uh, the season of Master of None. It was really great work. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Have a good one.